All right, composition of functions. So when we put more than one function together, we call that a composite function, and we're going to define them here. So if we have two different functions, so we name our functions whatever we want, and we're going to call them function f and function g. And we're going to say here we have the function given by f of g of x. So the little o here means of. f of g of x, and so that's equivalent here, this little o, f of g of x equals f of g of x is called a composite. So when we make a composite of something, we are putting putting things together like when a composer composes music, you have to put treble clef and bass clef, you add dynamics, you're composing things that all these things work together to make one function. That's kind of the way we're treating treating this. We're taking smaller functions, putting them together to make one larger process. So here's Here's a picture. We have the domain of f of g is a set of all x. So if you look at this blue blob here, this blue blob contains the domain of g. So all these values in here are in the domain of g. And then as we go from the blue blob to the green blob, we perform the function g, whatever it is, and we get the range, which is g of x. So we have the outputs for g of x. And then if we operate on those and do the f function to that those outputs we get f of g of x and so you see we kind of are composing or combining two smaller functions or two functions to create <coughs> one larger function called f of g of x and so the domain of f is actually the outputs in this green blob here that's what are the inputs that's what gets input into f and we get a new output so it says at the bottom here, the composite of f with g may not be equal to the composite of g with f. So if we change that around and do g of f of x, it is a lot of times different function than f of g. All right, so here are a couple of examples. So we have a function f of x equals 2x minus 3, and a second function g of x that's equal to the cosine function, cosine of x. And so they give us, they're going to ask us to find two composite functions, f of g. All right, so let's look at f of g first, and then we're going to look at g of f second. All right, so the first thing is to understand that when we write it this way, f of g of x, it really means this. And we work our way from the inside, so we evaluate g of x first, and then we, we take those outputs and input them into the f function. So here's what that looks like. Go one more here. All right. So if you look, g of x, the g of x function is equivalent to the cosine of x. So I'm going to replace g of x with cosine of x. So I'm going to write a little g of x here. So we're substituting cosine of x for g of x because that's how the g of x function is defined. So now I'm left with f of cosine of x. Making me go several times here. We'll see if I can get to the end. And so when I input the cosine function into f, here's what we get. All right. So if you look up at the top, the f of x function is 2 times my input minus 3. Well, my new input is cosine of x. So I'm going to replace x with cosine of x, and I get 2 times cosine of x minus 3, and that is equal to f of g of x. Go through the whole, whole thing here. I'm not sure why the PowerPoint is doing this. Finish it up. There you go. There it is, simplified. 2 times the cosine of x minus 3. That is f of g of x. So let's look at the second one. Now we're going to switch it around and go g of f of x. We're going to start with our f of x function and work our way out toward the g. So it's g of, again, our, our f of x function was 2x minus 3, so we simply substitute in. And here comes the next part. Now g is equal to the cosine of my input. And so my input is now, because we evaluated the f of x function, is 2x minus 3. So that goes into the g function, which is the cosine of 
x, our new x, if you want to think about it that way, is 2x minus 3. So we're composing two functions together and putting them into one larger function. And we'll go through all the way to see what it is simplified here. And they're going to simplify it. And that's really, really what it ends up being is cosine of 2x minus 3. And you'll note that before we had something different and the g of f is not equivalent to f of g. So f of g of x is not equivalent to g of f of x. All right. Finally, in this section, uh, we talk about zeros and intercepts of graphs again. And you guys are used to this from other, other things we've talked about. So an x-intercept of a graph is defined to be the point A, our x-coordinate, and zero is our y-coordinate, at which the graph crosses the x-axis, our x-intercepts. If the graph represents a function f, the number A is a zero of f. So when we talk about zeros of a function, we're talking about the x-coordinate where it crosses the x-axis. In other words, the zeros of a function f are the solutions, solutions, zeros, a, zero, all saying equivalent things, where the graph crosses the x-axis. And so we're looking at where f of x equals zero, because y is zero on the x-axis. All right, in terminology of functions, a function is even. So we're going to talk lastly here about even and odd functions. It's even if its graph is symmetric with the y-axis, so going back to symmetry a little bit, and it's odd if it's symmetric with respect to the origin. So odd, both O, uh, odd, the word odd and origin start with O, so that can help you connect those, and even is a uh, y-axis. All right, so here's the test for even and odd functions. Y equals f of x, that, that's the name of the function. It's even if f of negative x equals f of x. And the function y equals f of x is odd if f of negative x equals negative f of x. So let's look at an example here. Determine whether each of these functions is odd, even, or neither. Sometimes it could be neither one. Then find the zeros of the function. Let's look at this first one. f of x equals x cubed minus x. So you see a is going to be odd. So o, remember, we have respect to the origin. And we want to get f of negative x equals negative f of x. So if I replace uh, x with minus x, so I take negative x cubed. That's going to give me negative x times negative x times negative x. Gives me negative x cubed. And then opposite minus x. That's going to be a plus x. Now, here they pulled the negative sign out. And so that's going to be opposite of my original function. If you look this part, sorry, it's a little sloppy. x cubed minus x is, that is equal to what we started with. So opposite of my original function is negative f of x. So this is an odd function. The second one is going to be, here we go. Oh, the zeros. Let's look at the zeros first. So let f of x equals 0. So x cubed minus x equals 0. And if you factor this, they factor in x out. And then you get x squared minus 1, which is the difference of two squares. So you get x minus 1, x plus 1. And so you're going to ask yourself, what makes this, each of these factors, equal to 0? And if you look at those, you can see when x is 0, when x is 1 and when x is negative 1, we get the zeros. And there they are.